Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz bassist and band leader Hannah Marks of the Heartland Trio. They are swinging through Kansas City on the front end of their tour at the Mod Gallery on May 9th, 2019. So the band was formed by Hannah in 2017, and it also includes Barclay Moffat on tenor sax and Rocky Martin on the drums. Alongside their original compositions, this trio uses jazz standards, rock songs, and traditional folk tunes as vehicles for their ultimate expression. And their overall sound reflects a desire to create with a gritty and spontaneous garage band mentality while exploring beyond the boundaries of their traditional roles with their instruments in a jazz setting. She discussed their debut 2018 album called Year One and much more. So get to know her, this band, and dig this interview, my friends. So, Perfect. Hannah, thank you for taking a minute out for Neon Jazz. I appreciate it. Yeah, excited. So let's start off here, and before we get to your 2018 CD, Year One, I want to talk to you about this upcoming trip to Kansas City. Talk to me about the trip, where you're going to play, and how you feel about it. Yeah, so our um, my tour with my band Heartland Trio starts on uh, Wednesday, which is tomorrow, and we're starting off in our hometown of Bloomington, Indiana, and then we go right to Kansas City the next day. We're playing at Mod Gallery. It's my understanding that this is sort of a relatively newer jazz series in Kansas City, so we're really excited to be a part of this like up-and-coming jazz series. Talk to me about this band. How did it come together? Where did you all originate? And kind of where are your origins from? Yeah, so um, I'm from Des Moines, Iowa, and uh, our saxophonist Sparkly Moffat is from Pueblo, Colorado. And our drummer, Rocky Martin, is from Chicago. So all coming from different backgrounds, uh, but we sort of all convened together, uh, Bloomington, Indiana, at the Jacobs School of Music at Indiana University. Um, we just graduated this weekend, so we're all pretty happy about that. But yeah, we all started playing together about a year and a half ago. And I sort of brought the band together because they were, they're my closest friends, and I love playing with them. And so... I sort of had an idea in my mind of like what kind of music I would want to make with these two, uh, and that's what that's what started Heartland Trio. So, talk to me about this the, the, your debut CD, Year One. How, what was the vision? What was the artistic purpose for this? Yeah, so the title of the album is like pretty cut and dry. Um, we recorded it almost exactly from a year, uh, like a year between our first gig. And it really felt like this is like we're encapsulating our first year as a band. We were all new composers when we started playing together. So all of the compositions and arrangements on it are like some of our first compositions. The first track on the album, Resolution, which is one of my compositions, um, I think that was the second thing I've ever written. And it, it's been cool to sort of workshop all of our music and arrangements with the band over the past year. Um, so, like, after a year of, like, touring and working on this material, we were really ready to go into the studio and, and record it. You just said you just graduated. You're clearly in, in the thick of what's going on with jazz. How is jazz doing in 2019? I think it's thriving and constantly changing. Um, I think I've had somewhat of a skewed view just because I've been in school. Um, so I'm sure my opinion is going to change, um, like, you know, now that I'm graduated and sort of stepping in onto a scene, um, I'm most likely planning on moving to Chicago in a few months, so I'm really excited to just start playing there and, and get, into a, get into a bigger city. But the thing that I'm most inspired by and most fascinated by are these jazz bands, keyword on, on band, that are just getting out there, touring on their own, doing it themselves, or maybe through a small booking agency. And that's been really empowering to me, and that's what we're trying to do with Heartland Trio, is just to simply get out and play, get out and reach people. You know, jazz doesn't need to be in any fancy concert halls. It, of course, it's lovely when it's played there, but you know, we've played dive bars, we've played, um, you know, we're playing an art gallery on Thursday in Kansas City. You know, we've played all, all sorts of different venues. So I think 
I'm seeing a lot more jazz musicians do that on like a regional level, and that's really what's inspiring to me. Your music has been described as having a lot of elements into it in, that, that, that have not only influenced you, but that come out in your music. How would you describe the sound that you portray? We all come from sort of different backgrounds, and it all kind of fuses together, you know, into our sound. But I, I would say we have, you know, I grew up, I talk about this a lot, but I grew up listening to punk music, but I've also played some bluegrass and been in church bands. So that, that comes from my side. Um, Barkley uh, is a little bit older than us, so much more of a 90s kid than Rocky and I are. So he had a lot of the 90s hip-hop and R&B. You know, Rocky has listened to a lot of rock as well. And so, but at the same time, we're all jazz musicians, um, and we've all played jazz for a long time. So all these things sort of swirl around and, and create the Heartland Trio sound. Coming to Kansas City, if you right now have to verbally sell this show and <coughs> explain why someone, what would someone get from coming to see you live? Tell the audience in a, in a verbal ad why they should come. So you should come see our show because it's our first time playing in Kansas City, and I think we're going to bring something to Kansas City that is unique. Like I described before, we all can play straight ahead jazz, but that's not necessarily the music that we portray. So we're, you're going to be getting a, a different side of jazz that, that might be more avant-garde, more rock influence, a little bit out of left field. So I think that'll bring, you know, like a fresh take into Kansas City. But it's also a huge honor for us to play in Kansas City. You know, I've admired the jazz musicians there for a long time, and especially playing in such a historical setting. It just, I, I, we're really excited to just play in that city for the first time. Wonderful. Hannah, thank you for taking a minute out for Neon Jazz. Have a great trip and a great show here in Kansas City, and good luck in the future. Thank you, Joe, yes. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players and bands in Iowa, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Hannah for her time and the music. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com, and for everything Neon Jazz, Go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.